deaf and hard of hearing viewers, there's more to meet the eye. It's called closed caption TV. PBS is proud to have pioneered its development because for millions of persons with impaired hearing, closed captioning can open new windows on the world. Here's the way captioning works. The audio portion of the show is turned into visible subtitles or captions. These captions are then recorded, encoded, and transmitted to the home. In the home, an adapter unit attached to the TV allows captions to be shown on the screen, making it easy for hearing impaired persons to follow dialogue and action. Caption programs were first offered on a regular basis on PBS. We are pleased that not only will these programs continue, but that our efforts are being joined by those of commercial broadcasters. Closed caption shows are represented by this symbol. It will appear on TV listings, letting viewers know when they can watch these shows. Closed caption programs for the enjoyment and information of millions who might otherwise only see half the television picture. What you see here is the very first closed caption decoder ever available for sale to the public. And yes, it actually is a Sears. It was first and only available at Sears. And yes, Sears had to say it was solid state, because that was their thing. <laughs> of course, it's going to be solid state. But that said, it was OEM'd by Sanyo. So Sanyo developed it, Sears sold it in their stores. So the model number does start with 564, indicating it is a Sanyo. And what better thing to do than to pair it with a period correct Sears television. This Sears TV on the bottom is from 1979 and it was sold for a few model years. So I believe it was also sold through 1980 as well. So for reference, here is the Sears catalog page with the closed caption decoder from 1980. So yes, that's one reason why I'm doing this video, because who out there is going to have the period correct matching television to go with the Sears closed caption decoder? They call it the telecaption. So just a quick synopsis of the TV itself. This was a curbside find from about, oh, I don't know, 13 years ago. This is back when if you saw one of these TVs on the side of the road, more than likely they'll still work. If it was black plastic crap or silver plastic crap, 90s and newer, guaranteed it'd probably be dead. But this is back when I could still pick these TVs up off the side of the road and be in near mint condition. Only thing wrong with it is it's missing this little emblem there. It's supposed to say Sears, a solid state. So I have another video on this. I'll put it up in the corner here for you to click on. So, but yeah, I've had this TV a long time, trouble-free, naturally, it vintage. This closed caption decoder should have also been assembled in the same plant as the TV, which used to be the old Warwick plant. Sanyo bought them out, and uh, so that's where this thing could, what it came from. Another thing, steel cabinet, steel cabinet TV, steel cabinet, closed caption decoder with the same wood grain pattern. Now, a little messy where I got all the wires running right now, just ignore that. Here's the back of the unit, has an AC outlet on it for the television. Your inputs are 300 ohm twin lead VHF and UHF back before cable TV was commonplace. So you'd run your antenna to it and your output is a 75 ohm coax single output. And in this case, it has to get the TV through at another ballon because the TV is also set up just for twin lead um, 300 ohm connections. Yeah, but this is a period correct matching television it would go with. Notice the model numbers 564, 564. TV is actually pretty close to it. I mean, look at the date on it October 1979. And this, the first closed caption decoder came out in March of 1980. 
The Sears catalog page says March 15th, 1980s when it first became available. The first closed caption broadcast came about on March 16th, 1980, one day after it became available. How convenient. So the first programs available with closed captioning on March 16th were Disney's Son of Flubber on NBC, ABC Sunday Night Movie Semi-Tough, and a Masterpiece Theater on PBS. So that's how all this happened. I had this unit apart. Let's take a look here. So here's my actual first time taking it apart since I've had it. And you can see what they did. It's basically a television tuner, like right out of there seeing your TVs, power regulator there. But this little board is where all the magic happens. On the underside is the component layout. <laughs> well, you're in luck. You guys get to see the inside of the TV. See how similar the circuit board is to the um, closed caption decoder? Yeah, what happened was uh, I haven't had this TV on in a few years. Got it out. You know, last time I had it out, you know, I did all the adjustments on it. It worked for a few minutes and I lost the color and the brightness shot up some. Well, the first, this TV doesn't have a color killer adjustment. So the first thing you do is you look in your color section, color and video out, which is roughly around here and this IC. Well, What's the first thing you do when you see a socketed IC in a vintage piece of equipment? Well, you I popped it out, squirted some deoxid and pins and pushed it back down and that fixed the problem. I wasn't sure if that was the, what the actual problem may have been, but yes, that's the only thing bad about using socketed ICs, that can happen. But you also gotta remember this TV is 43 years old and I've never removed any of these ICs from their sockets, so it's a first. Sometimes this happens with age, but it's fixed now, and you guys get a bonus footage of inside this TV. 1979 Sears OEM by Sanyo. With electronic Vractor diode tuning of capacitance touch controls. And you can see the steel cabinetry. So real quick, we'll go over the unit itself. Big beefy power button with LED lamp. VHF and UHF rotary tuning. Automatic frequency control for the tuner. And your closed caption controls. You can either have it on TV where there's no caption. And just use this as the tuner. Caption or text. Also has closed captioning one. Closed captioning too. Other accessible controls in the back, character brightness and background. However, it's not as simple as that. It does affect how it receives the signal. If you turn the background too low, like almost black, the picture starts to bend and doesn't display the closed captioning correctly. So you find a happy medium and that's why the background is like gray on this. Uh, character adjusts the brightness of the characters. Um, that's just turned up all the way. And the third hole, which is not labeled, believe it or not, is a horizontal hold control for this. If it's out of uh, sync, it'll, it doesn't bend or just mess up like a, a regular television. It merely, um, there's, in, there's like these horizontal bars over top the image and you adjust that till it goes away and an RF modulator, channels three and four output. So to start with, we can power everything on. Now what I can show you, part of the problem is the stuff that is period correct I could, I would like to show may get hit by the copyright police. So I'm gonna insert things I know won't be bothered by them. And uh, this first one I just popped in for testing, it works, it's from 1990. Uh, tailspin, of course, that's just how I roll, and uh, we'll see how that works. And yes, I'm actually going to just do it with a DVD player. So, yes. Now, 
The RF modulator on this, I do not have set to channel three. For some reason, if you have both, uh, you know, being that I'm, this is obviously no longer off the air stuff, whatever RF modulated device you are using, if it's on the same channel as this, it causes a weird interference pattern. So when I turn this on, even though this is set to three, it's outputting the four. So I gotta skip over to four here. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering why, I programmed it so three and two are the same. Like if I have this off, I have two and three identically set up. We're gonna put on channel four. And these are capacitance touch, see? There you go. Anyways, we turn this on channel four and the unit is on already. You can see I can tune it. It's on channel three. Automatic frequency control on, caption on, and closed caption one. So let's get this moving. You would not expect that to be the text out of this 1980 unit. See? Nothing to it. I told you everything would work out. I bet you weren't expecting that for the how it would look. It looks just as good as a TV made today. And this unit is 42 years old. Now, up here, if I put it in text, there is no text. There's just a bar at the top right there. We'll turn it back to normal. Okay, so the first closed captioning system was successfully encoded and broadcast in 1973 with the cooperation of PBS station WETA. So when that was successful, the FCC set aside line 21 for transmission of closed captions in 1976. National Captioning Institute was created in 1979 in order to get the cooperation of the commercial television networks. So here comes 1980. So yes, the first scheduled programming was what I mentioned earlier on March 16th, 1980 with this very unit. This would have been the only unit you could have purchased at the time. It wasn't until 1993, July 1st, 1993, when TVs with 13 inches or greater screens were required to all have closed caption decoders. Some other programs I have on DVD, such as MASH, I, like I love to play the early 80s episodes that would go with this, but just the second or two when the copyright police is all over it. You're MacGyver? I'm sorry, I guess I was expecting another high-powered lawyer or an ex-FBI agent with another great idea that doesn't work. I, I'm sorry, I'm a little wound up. Chris Rhodes. Your father tells me you've been researching things. I'm in disguise. So for the last part of this video, we're going to do some DTV footage with that. 70 channels found so far. I'm running the scan again here. So, to answer your question, yes, it still works with modern-day programming. A 42-year-old closed-caption decoder works with modern-day broadcasts. 
Now that said, I don't have any digital cable service or subscribe to any digital streaming because I have everything I want to watch on physical media. So it's just a waste of money. Everything that is outrageous and stupid. So it's all commercials too, so I don't even bother. Anyways, I did this just to demonstrate it works with regular television. And we will conclude the video on this. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the very first closed caption decoder, the Sears Telecaption by Samuel. Thanks for watching. A special shout out and thanks to Liz and Maddie, our superstar patrons.